Good morning guys, good morning internet, this is CJ back once again with another narrated or time-lapse video. Today we'll be taking a look at one of my favorite uh, sketches I did for Concept Arts Daily Sketch Group. Um, the prompt for the sketch was called Blowing Bluefish. And I mean it instantly came to my mind what I wanted to do when I first read that prompt um, back in the day when Concept Art org was still around um so yeah uh i was browsing browsing the daily sketch group forum and that was one of the prompts that i saw was blowing blowfish and instantly i already knew what i wanted to do which was a blowfish blowing on a trumpet i think it's a trumpet it could be a saxophone um you know what let's call it a saxophone because i have a feeling it's a saxophone um but yeah, the moment I read that prompt, instantly it came to my mind that that's what I wanted to do, which was a blowing, a blowfish blowing on a saxophone. So, um, so yeah, let's get started on describing what's going on. Uh, so the very first thing I did was obviously create the scene or, um, create the environment not so much as a scene but a, the environment and then you wanted something really simple so um i created a scene which is basically kind of just like a flat ground um like it would see in a very shallow reef of some sort you know it's just all plain old ground and of course the fish is there um i could have gone super complicated i could have added like coral reefs and whatnot to kind of add pizzazz to the illustration but since i already had an intention of uh doing a speed paint i obviously just wanted to keep things simple so i just did a simple environment uh nothing else but the ground and the water and the fish with his lovely saxophone so um but yeah to start things out after i i did the environment i obviously started on the fish and uh instead of uh sketching things out i wanted to create the basic shape first and that's the reason why you saw me take a big brush size or uh put up my brush into a bigger brush size and uh basically created this form this shape um, and as soon as i found the general shape that i wanted to work with then i started the sketch um it is opposite of how most people work actually it's not it's a common thing to actually start out with shapes um but for beginners um this is not a very common thing that beginners do most beginners when they start out they always want to do the sketch first and then the form um but a lot of uh people who are more used to painting and have gotten used to painting uh they realize like there's time saving efficiencies that can be had when you start up with forms so if you're a beginner and you're always hesitant about starting out with forms you're always just wanting to start out with a sketch first i highly suggest that you try uh starting with forms it helps build up uh, the image quicker sometimes so uh, and there's always instances where it's always better to start out with the sketch of course but um in a painting you kind of want to block out certain things as quickly as you can and starting out with a form is essentially faster in a way but enough about that i, I think i mentioned this a few times in my videos before and i think you're very well aware of how i start out things sometimes um i just know that when i first started out with digital painting and painting in general i was always afraid to start out with forms i always had to have my sketch because i needed my guide i needed my outline i need to know what i was doing but once you get more used to it um you realize the the importance of starting out with forms um and i urge beginners to practice um starting out with forms but anyway, so going back to the video, after I started with the form, what I did next was I took a color dodge brush and kind of 
dodge out the areas that I was that was going to be receiving highlights. Um, as you can see, I already kind of marked out where the light source was going to be when I created the shadowed area at the lower right behind the saxophone. Um, so that's the shadow cast or the cast shadow um, being generated by the blowfish. And so since the cast shadow is over there, you can tell that the light source is going to be top left corner. And so I basically highlighted that area with a color dodge brush so it could receive a few highlights. Um, then I went and took the multiply brush and kind of, you know, I situated my shadow area, which is going to be the belly of the fish. And obviously the inside portion of the saxophone is going to be dark, which you just saw me kind of just work on just a few moments ago. Um, so those areas are going to be dark and so i'm kind of going back in those areas or i went back in those areas and uh added a multi-body brush to it and now i'm smudging actually just to kind of spread things around so yeah um and i do believe that after this um so i did i did the highlights and i added the shadows um and I just now, now seeing that I'm actually going back with some color dodge. Um, this is actually kind of a nice effect. It totally added some more uh, depth to the background. So that was really cool that I did that. Um, so yeah, nice little um, effect that I did, you know kind of make it look like there's a specific light that's kind of focusing in on the fish when I added that um, color dodge. And so of course, after doing that, I kind of smudged things around again. Um, my useful MO, mode of operation, kind of smooth things out, you know, kind of like it painterly. So I uh, just went back and kind of just smudged and blended some areas. And after this, if I'm not wrong, what I'm going to do next is kind of like the texture portion of the fish or the the details in a way or like the texture details on the fish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush, set it on multiply and I'm going to create stripes with it. And then after creating those stripes, I'm going to take another brush that has dots to it and use color dodge to create spots. And so that's what I'm going to be doing next. And then after that, I'll, and, and I'll start my detailing process.
so now that I'm done with the texturing of the fish, I'm pretty much going to just start the detailing process. Which, you know, again, as I've mentioned before, what really happens in the detailing process is just me delineating my edges, making them shorter or not necessarily sharper, but making them readable. Um, I'm accentuating the shadows where they're needed. You can see that I'm accentuating some of the shadows and the stripes right now. And then after that, after that I add the highlights. So it's kind of like a rinse repeat process. Um, takes a while, you know, depending on what parts or depending on how complicated the piece is. Uh, and some of my longer pieces where some of the details are immensely complicated and there's a lot of stuff going on, the detailing process can go on for hours. Uh, typically it spans like two thirds of the whole process for most of the time. Um, and sometimes it goes by real quick. Um, in the case of this particular speed paint, uh, the detailing went by real fast. I mean, the whole thing, this whole process took me only 40 minutes. And I think I've mentioned this before on several occasions. Um, my speed paints around two, or typically around two to three hours. Um, my speed paints that are under one hour, they're typically garbage. <laughs> like I typically don't share them just because they don't look that good. Um, I'm trying to get better. Um, I joined Facebook's speed paint group, and one of the rules is to have is to do a speed paint um, under 30 minutes, and it's very strenuous for me because it's such a small time frame. And even though I've done paintings that spans only 30 minutes, it's like I said, my success rate for those are, are not very high. And this just happens to be one of those speed paints that are close to 30 minutes. I mean, it was 40 minutes, um, but uh, you know, it's close enough to 30 minutes for me to consider it like a like a speed paint. Um, so yeah, this is one of the few speed paints that are done under an hour that I, I love. Just because I thought it was cute. It is a very much like a Bobby Choose kind of style of artwork, you know? Cute, animal, uh, very Disney-ish, which is not my typical style at all. You know, I, don't, I typically don't do Disney stuff, but this is very, very Disney. This is very, very Little Mermaid. You know, you could easily see a fish like this, a character like this, in a Little Mermaid cartoon or show or movie. So, uh, so yeah, um, I thought it was cute. It was done very quick, and the subject matter is really cool. You know, happy little blowfish just blowing away. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, this is again, uh, like I mentioned, one of the few speed paints that I just absolutely love. It just it worked out great for me. And as you can see, I mean, the process just went by so quick. I mean, you can pretty much see already. Um, it's almost done. Um, I mean, yeah, the the huge gist of the painting, the the majority of the painting is pretty much done. Um, at this point, all I really need to do is kind of go back over the fins, kind of, you know, delineate it, kind of, you know, detail it, essentially, which is what I'm doing now. I also need to clarify the mouthpiece and the mouth coming together, which I'll show you in a few minutes and detail the saxophone which I if I remember correctly I, I really wasn't sure what the saxophone looks like or um, what the general look of it is I mean I knew the general look you know which is what I have here but I didn't really know like what the buttons or where the buttons were and whatnot so when I was working on this I, I remember I, I remember having to look it up uh, on Google what a saxophone looks like and uh, if I'm not wrong I think I had it in my phone I was looking at the saxophone on my phone when I uh, finally ended up detailing the saxophone so I needed a real quick reference 
essentially for the saxophone but everything else was just pretty much straight from my from my brain i, I didn't feel the need to look up the blowfish i guess it would have been advantageous for me for to look up a blowfish but in this particular case since the image in my head was really strong when i first read the prompt it, it was just so easy for me to just go ahead and just go with what was on my head um if you guys have been watching any of my videos you know that i'm i'm all about using references all the time and i always recommend this to people always use references but there were just times where you know it's not necessary and this is one of those times where it was ne not necessary for me to look up the blowfish because you know um the image in my head was strong enough for me to carry through throughout the painting so yeah and the saxophone though I, I i needed help with that but as for the blowfish i was happy with the cutesy character that i came up with and I guess I didn't feel the need to go back and re-edit it with a much more realistic version and whatnot. Yeah. So yeah.
So this video is about this close to being finished. Um, I'm pretty much just putting in my final finishing touches, which is again, you know, um, delineating my edges. In, the case, in this case, I'm just going back over the tail and kind of clearing some things out and making things much, much more readable. So yeah. Um, I did get a criticism, well not so much as a criticism, but a commentary on how I should have added bubbles coming out of, sa coming out of the saxophone, you know, for another action uh, illustration or whatnot. But um, I never did get the chance to go back and add those, so um, I, I think it would have made the illustration look cooler for sure. Um, but I'm happy without it as well, you know, with or without the bubbles. Uh, I think the photo in itself is already very effective. <laughs> I mean, you don't really see blowfishes uh, playing the saxophone. So, yeah, so in a way, the image is already strong in itself, as is. Um, it could have been a lot stronger if I had added the bubbles, but again, you know. I just never got around to actually adding it back or adding the bubbles in. So yeah. But again, as I've mentioned, um, this video is close to being finished. Uh, there's really not much else for me to do except again, you know, go back and add a few more highlights and whatnot. So I was very, very happy with this piece. I, I really, really like the whole bobby chew vibe vibe um that you get from it so i think it is absolutely cool for sure Thank you so much guys for watching this. I'll see you guys around. Good night.